So I'm here with Tracy Yardley, who is, I'm very thankful to be a member of the Kess team. You provided the art for us for our game, Sonic Roll, that is on shelves right now. People are buying it in droves. It's very exciting for us to see. And I'm excited to talk to you about it. Glad to be here. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah of course. I love your I love your background for all the Sonic enthusiasts out there. I feel like mm -hmm. they'll be jealous. Yeah. <laughs> is, is, is your general like Sonic merch collection pretty off the charts? Do you just have like... A I don't have a it? ton of stuff. I've got a few of the plush toys and this is my banner that I take around to conventions and things. So for, for the folks that are kind of unaware of how this works. So I work for a company called Kess and we have a game called Sonic Roll that is, as I mentioned, just kind of hitting shelves now. In the development process for that game, we wanted to get involved with an authentic Sonic creator with an artist and you have worked on Sonic comic books and drawings and things for going on what almost 20 years now is that right close to yeah yeah which so we got you know basically an absolutely authentic person an artist who creates this stuff to help with the game and the game looks phenomenal it came out really really well i think anybody who, who gets it in their hands is going to be excited about it but i think people wanted to know a little bit about the process of, and your process and relationship to sonic and and kind of what it's like to have been this point in your career, kind of a lifelong Sonic person, we'll say. It seems like more than more than just an artist. I mean, I, you're a pretty huge fan, right? Oh, yeah. I was 11 years old when the first Sonic game came out on okay. the Genesis. And I just fell in love with it. So <laughs> I've been playing them ever since. Talk to me a little bit about the process of, of becoming a fan and then making that transition to actually working on the brand. It was actually my brother that got the Genesis with Sonic for Christmas one year. And I, I basically just kind of took it over from him. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I always, every year after that, I begged my parents for the next Sonic game or I'd save up lunch money and stuff to buy on myself if I needed to or whatever. But, uh, uh, you know, yeah, I just, I, I really, really enjoyed those, those early games. They really clicked with me. The design of Sonic, the characters, the world, the gameplay, it was all really fun. And I just, I just loved it. It just really, yeah, it really clicked with me. I also read some of the comics. It's, you know, kind of, it all kind of hit at the same time, you know, those, those first few games. And then they had the, the, uh, the Archie comic books. There were the original miniseries, uh, four issue miniseries. The first three were drawn by Scott Shaw, who I had, I had never heard of. I didn't really read a lot of comics as a kid. I watched a lot of cartoons. I was way into animation and stuff, but not so much comics. But, uh, yeah, Sonic yeah. was a, was a great cartoon comic book that I could jump into. And I really loved Scott Shaw's artwork. Hey, you know, it's just fantastic. He's got a really great, cartooning style uh and I, I i enjoyed it so much that that's why i stole my exclamation point you yeah know? right it's been, yeah, it's been since yeah it's like Scott. seventh grade i started signing all my homework with <laughs> an exclamation point after my name and nobody told me not to do it so i kept doing it i was very fortunate also as i, as I probably mentioned elsewhere that I, I i had very supportive art teachers in middle and high school you know that didn't didn't discourage me from drawing you know video game characters and stuff for my art sure. projects you know they didn't they didn't say no that's not art you can't do that and you know my parents and stuff they never discouraged me from pursuing art as a career you know they all everybody that i knew seemed to think that guy he's gonna be in comics someday and, uh, and it's yeah. just something i always enjoy doing anyway drawing i've i continue to develop that through middle high school college and uh I was a little burnt out after school i went to the savannah college of art and design i did comics with my friends from school, we just did our own black and white little comics that we had printed off at the local print shop. And we would go to comic book conventions in Orlando, Florida, or Charlotte, North Carolina, or various cities, wherever we could go, you know, where there was a significant show. And we would pay for the table in the artist alley and sit there. And it wasn't about making money at that point. It was just getting our work out there and having eyes on it. And eventually, I, you know, ran into acquaintances that, that knew the editor on Archie Sonic. At the time, it was Mike Pellerito, and he put me in touch with him, and I sent samples in, and he liked what I was doing. At the time, he was looking for a new artist to do work on the Sonic X comic book that was okay. coming out at the time, you know, based on the anime series. And that's what I was initially hired for, but I also got to do a couple issues of the regular book, and Mike liked what I was doing so well, he just let me keep on doing it. That's very cool. You mentioned, uh, you know, going to art school and the relationship that you had to your teachers there. It's so interesting that any artistic medium now in the, the in the age of digital media and the way that we all sort of exist online, that old school in person networking from all those years ago, it used to be so significant and have such a huge impact on your ability to meet other creatives and to meet mentors. Definitely recommend that if people have a chance 
or the opportunity or if they have the financial ability to go to uh, you know a, a comic book convention and meet people in person yeah. that's a great way to it's a great way to connect with people because there's going to be professionals there occasionally there'll be an editor there or whatever and if you bring along your portfolio and you're polite and you say hey could you please look at my work most people are going to do that you know I'll, I'll take a look at people's work and i'll try to give them some critique you know and that's how i got jobs was through meeting people at, at shows you know, that i was already acquainted with in that case but you know, it's definitely a good avenue to pursue if you can, if you can get there. I recall in the old Nintendo Power magazines, they used to have various comics based on Mario, or a Star Fox, uh, and or Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past was my favorite one. Yeah, it's incredible. Um, really fantastic um, manga artwork in there with full watercolor paint. Uh, it's just really amazing. And my friend got me a collected trade of that for Christmas one year. <laughs> Best cool. present I've ever gotten. I still got, I still have it. And that just really a lot of what I have done throughout my career is just you know, in my life and fandom and all that has just been like comics is part of that. But the real main key is really video games and the marriage of the two. I love comics about video games. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just fascinating that you know out of all the people who've you know read Sonic comics and were fans of the games and this in this you know this whole world, I got to to go on to work on that book for a lot of years, and it's it's pretty amazing. So, yeah, I mean that's an incredible memory, I, and I'm sure it's incredibly gratifying when you look back to where it all kind of started to realize that that thing that you loved so much became such an enormous part of your life. Um, I was going to say the thing that comes to mind for me when you mentioned some of those things in the 80s, Transformers is the one specifically. I remember the cartoon because it was a little before my time, but then they made the animated movie in 86 and they gave it to the Japanese animators. And so it looks totally different than the original cartoon looks. It's, a, it's much sharper. It's much more evolved. And when I was older in the 90s and I would go back to watch the old cartoon and then I watched that movie, it was such a reminder of these characters, these animated characters you love in a video game. As soon as you elevate the style, because somebody decides that a new take on it or a new style of art, your whole world changes, right? You're like, I've only seen Sonic this way. Well, now I've seen Sonic this new way and it's so cool. It's such so exciting. And it, that's very inspiring, I would imagine, for you to, to have seen you know that art style evolve as you were a fan. Definitely, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's like, this is so cool that you, know, you can do this in a different way. And um, I know that over in, in the UK, they had Sonic the Comic over there, which is, a you know, had a much different style, too. Yeah, it is. It's nice to break out of what you know, what you're used to, because there's yeah, there's a lot more out there than we you know, usually get in the mainstream. So it, it's good. And that's another thing with, you know, the Internet and all that today. It's so much easier to find, uh, you know, different takes on stuff now than it was back in those days. Yeah. What is the collaboration at this point in your life? You know, if you got to collaborate with either an artist or on a franchise or something you're a fan of, that would be sort of the dream. Is there something that you look, look, look in the world and you're like, man, that'd be cool to work on. Well, I, lots of things. I mean, there's a lot of different properties at IDW that now, you know, the same things from when we were kids, the Ninja Turtles. I would love to work on a book like that. Yeah, right. Uh, or, you know, Ghostbusters or things like that. I recently did a, a Felix the Cat book, which is owned by uh, DreamWorks. Uh, the, they hold that mm -hmm. uh, property. I think they have Inspector Gadget also, which would be pretty fun to work on. I was a, I was a favorite of mine as a kid, a cart that cartoon. But there's, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I would love to do different video game style comics, you know, Legend of Zelda or Metroid or Mario. Yeah, there's all kinds of video game properties that I think would be a lot of fun to work on. But I would be a little more interested in doing something of my own, something original, uh, you know, if if that chance yeah, I mean, ever comes up. I mean, that's how we came into contact with you, right? It was that we worked with Sega and they said there's a very short list of people that we approve and think are capable mm -hmm. of doing this design for you. We need people that we have 100% implicit uh, <laughs> confidence based on past experience can can accomplish this. And so we were given a list and that's that's how we actually met you was that, you know, like that it was one of the best. I, work I appreciate with, so. that. And I've, I've heard, too, that they they like what I do. And I'm I'm very I'm very yeah. humbled and grateful and proud of that.
when you are trying to get inspired and you and you want to work on something in a new way or new eyes on something and you're kind of stuck in that like art block so to speak what do you have any methods or suggestions for artists or how to get yourself out of the rut boy i don't know uh it's tough i don't really get art block usually per se except until very recently that's that's why you know that's yeah. i don't know i would suggest yeah just doing something else for a little while if you can actually you know what do the young people say now? Touch grass, go outside, <laughs> go for a walk, sure, exercise sure, sure. a bit, you know. Don't, if you're just sitting at a, your table staring at a blank page, nothing's happening. Just get up and walk away from it for a while, you know. Yeah. And like any other job, you know, um, like you said, it's it, this kind of work, creative work, you know, you have to make yourself do it. There's no, well, there's not usually a boss or whatever. And if there is, just because they tell you to do it doesn't mean you can. If you get working on something you start on something and you have an idea of it and then you kind of hit a you hit a little bit of a block with it like oh, i don't i don't like this page or i don't particularly like the framing here and you try to go and sort of fix it and you still don't like it that when you get into that we get into that mode of finishing it it can be like the most infuriating creative experience like going and revisiting something well i don't know um usually it's funny because i've done so many comic book pages for sonic I don't even know, you know, a few thousand, but over yeah. the years. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's it's a business, and you gotta churn out the product. And I know that sounds a little sure, you, I'm like, you yeah. know, reductive or whatever. But um, if I'm having that kind of problem on a comic page, usually I'll just say, "Oh well." <laughs> there's a there's a there's a saying that that's in the business better. What is it? Better done than perfect. Or I'm paraphrasing that, you know. Not every page is going to be perfect. Not every drawing is going to be perfect. You know, we're on a, a deadline. So a lot of the time, if it's not working out, you just got to do it. You just got to put it on the page and, and, and deal with yeah, it. Right. Say, well, it's not what I wanted, but, you know, it's it has to go get out the door. Because <laughs> comics, if, if people aren't familiar, there are occasions when one individual will do a comic from start to finish visually. You know, they'll do the, the sometimes they'll write the story and do the visuals. Um, but it usually there's a writer and then there's an artist or a team of artists. So with traditionally, there's a penciler and then it goes to an inker and then it goes to the colorer, colorist and the letterer. So you get four or five people working on a book and it's like a, you know, a, um, assembly line, you know. So if I take forever and ever to finish my pencils, everybody who's coming behind me is going to have less and less time to get their part done. Right. So yeah, a lot of the time, if it's not the way you want it, you just got to say, oh, well, it's it's done at least. <laughs> you know, like, I can move on to the next page and they can get their work done, which is unfortunate, you know. But also at the same time, when you're pumping out a lot of pages, you know, one or two that don't meet your standards is not the end of the world. Yeah, I'm sure it's different to do panel by panel than something like the cover you mentioned doing. Do, do you have a favorites issue or, or, or sort of work of sonic you've ever done uh, i think and i always go back to this it was pretty early in my uh, run on archie i'd only done about four or five issues at that point but i think issues 168 and 169 of archie which was the title of that was order from chaos it's one of my favorites because for a few reasons jim amish uh, the anchor or the fantastic guy he had kind of said that he he thought i could put a little more spot black in my artwork you know areas of of just pure black and, and, and accents of dark black to kind of break up the, the visuals. Yeah. And, you know, he was right. <laughs> so I did that. And he was like, he was amazed that I took his, his advice. And and it, he was right. It, it made the artwork look a lot nicer and more dynamic and all that. And it was a cool story because it took a lot of older elements from the Archie comics that were different from the games. And I, I like to have everything kind of line up with the games. <laughs> You know, it, like it, it solved the problem of like the there being only seven Chaos Emeralds. And in the story, there was it was the first time, I think in a while, and it was the first time I got to draw. I had Super Sonic, Super Shadow, and Super Tails in the story, and I got to design this cool um, metallic villain. You know, who had like this nanite armor on. This is a lot of fun, cool stuff to draw, you know. And again, because it was, it's just a lot of creative freedom to design. I like Tails a lot. I was, I, I thought he was cool. A cool addition to Sonic 2. And I like Blaze the Cat. She's a really cool character. Her powers are cool. She's, you know, a neat design. 
It's basically, you know, in essence, a female Sonic. Not the personality-wise or anything, but, you know, she's just as cool and powerful yeah, yeah. and all that. But yeah, Sonic, usually, or Blaze, or Shadow. Those kind, of, those kind of characters are fun to draw because they're usually doing something kinetic and energetic and, and they look cool yeah. lots of spiky hair and all that stuff and they're moving around and yeah you get to do put them in cool poses and stuff compositionally did you train in school to do to do like i mean were you training hard to do sort of cartoon and animated or did you do figure drawing at all like was your training more varied in middle and high school you know we had various projects of all kinds you know um and a lot of my projects would focus on cartoons and comic type stuff you know yeah when when i was allowed to but then of course you know i went to scad and i'll say again that i i recommend if you can afford to go to an art school then do it's um it's a it's a nice way to learn in a focused environment that's difficult to do otherwise you know but it's yeah. not impossible but again with the internet today you can learn a lot of that stuff on your own through youtube or various other methods yeah. but yes drawing yeah in, in, in scat yeah, i went there because specifically they had a sequential art program you know it's a fancy name for comics and you know the first year or two is most of that is the foundation type stuff yes figure drawing drawing in general right. color theory um two, two dimensional three dimensional design all that kind of stuff and that's great it's nice to have that kind of uh background and foundation you know it's the better Generally speaking, people will say, you know, what do I, how do I draw Sonic better? Well, I was like, just learn to draw. <laughs> learn how to draw in general. Yeah, right. And then you will be able to draw Sonic, or you'll be able to draw Naruto, or you'll be able to draw, you know, a figure, you know, from life drawing or whatever. It's like drawing a static image and illustration is a much different thing than drawing a comic, you know. And it goes with writing the comic, too, mm -hmm. and understanding how to tell a story, uh, you know, from one picture to another, and then... You know, have a, a, a page that is, you know, usually you want it to be cohesive in some way and then lead to the next page and all that. So understanding that way of storytelling, using static images and choosing that right moment in time. Like, you know, I usually say, like, if you're to write a, have a sequence of somebody throwing a baseball and hitting it, where do you, what moment in that pitch is the right moment that you choose to depict? You know, do you have the, the pitcher's arm back here? Yeah, or do you want to have the pitcher's arm up there, following through the, the pitch? Right. Do you want to have it all in one panel, just you know, and the bat already being swung? It depends on you know how much room you have to tell your story. It depends on um, what kind of action you're wanting to portray. Uh, so having an understanding in your mind of how that works and how to distill motion into you know just a few images it's it's difficult it's it's a weird and unique way of thinking you know and the the what they call the gutters the the spaces in between panels uh, you know what happens in between those panels is just as important you have to you know imply with the next image all the things that took place in between you know uh, you know and, and having a having the ability to kind of visualize in three dimensions placing the camera so to speak you know up above or down below or how do you frame your shot is it going to be a close-up or a, a, a wide shot or how many characters are you going to have do you need to have a background because not every panel is going to need to have a background you know you want to have maybe one really good establishing shot on a page and if you don't absolutely have to have your characters interacting with their environment a lot of the times it's best just to not bother <laughs> less work and, you know, it's not always necessary, but then again... When you're... So these days, you know, you mentioned Sonic this last year. You've taken a bit of a step back. What are you doing for fun? I mean, what are you... Non-art. Like, what are your hobbies that keep you excited and engaged and inspired? Not a lot. I don't have a lot of time. I work all the time, <laughs> you know, to make a living. But when I do have a little bit of free time, I like to play video games, which, lame, <laughs> kind okay. of obvious. Yeah, and then they Tracks, yeah, makes sense. I don't, yeah. I don't get to yeah. do it much. So when I do, that's usually what I'll try to do. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us about this game. If you guys have not checked it out already, Sonic Roll is on shelves now. You can check out Tracy's art. You can see it, it looks incredibly cool. The game is really fun to play. You can find it online and it's just going to keep rolling out to more and more places over the course of the year. So any gaming convention, you'll see us there. 
And if the folks want to check out your stuff and see more of your art, what's the best place to find you? Well, I want to pivot away from it eventually, but I'm on Twitter. You can find me there. That's my best. That's what I use for business most of the time. Yardly Art on Twitter, at Yardly okay. Art. That's, yeah, that's probably the best place to catch me. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us and, and guys, check that stuff out. And I hope you're as excited for Sonic Roll as we are. And thanks for all your contribution to the game. I think it really came out hey, looking pretty fantastic. My honor and my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad I could be a part of it. <laughs>